Hello and welcome back to the Mobius Archives. This is your host, Mobius Rex, and we are playing Agrarian Skies. Alright, so this thing is getting annoying. Um, every time I'm coming back here, I'm having to fill this up with uh, another lava bucket, and I kind of want to get that automated, if at all possible. Uh, so we can take a look at a few things. Um, one method that I found, I was thinking that uh, a liquid crafter would work, but liquid crafters and cyclic crafters, you need uh, a recipe that actually inputs lava into a bucket. So it was like, ah, oh, how do I actually get lava buckets? Uh, and that's really what we want to know. And lava buckets can actually be filled by a fluid transposer. So that's actually what we're going to go for today. Now, the interesting thing is, right now we only really have... Uh, temperate fluid ducts here. What we need is a hardened fluid duct. Uh, mostly because this will actually be able to hold any temperature fluid, including lava. Temperate fluid ducts will actually break. So hardened fluid ducts are just basically the same as temperate fluid ducts, but made with uh, invar. So we should have, unless I have it on me, why do I have two quest books? I don't know. I think I made up one because I thought I lost one. I couldn't find the bloody thing. Oh, and if you're wondering why I have an inscriber press, it's because one of the recipes for the inscriber press is to just pour molten tin into a blood empty casting table, and so you just get that accidentally. Whoops! Anywho, uh, invar, and I need lead. There we go. So we don't need too, too many of these right now, uh, but we probably will need a lot more later. Just do, let's do 12 for now, uh, because all we're doing is just setting up um, a liquid crafter and a pump to pump it out. Got to make sure you have all the components that you need for the liquid crafter. Uh, it takes glass, it takes copper gears, and it takes redstone. And there we go, redstone. And this should actually complete the automation of this section here, and that'll allow us to not only sift dust but actually progress so that we can go on and move this towards um, sifting sand and gravel as well by effectively making duplicate scenarios downstairs and duplicating um, everything else. So what we're building will actually allow us to automate this thing entirely. So this will be entirely, entirely hands-free after we figure out what to do with this stuff. And I think we could just pump it into these. Um, might as well just take all that. Um, but once we have everything sorted out, uh, we could duplicate this for uh, gravel and for sand and have that all coming upstairs, coming up to this, actually this one single packager. Um, probably even have this powered by a lava bucket system itself. And all the ores can actually be brought back up to the top there. Alright, so we need a redstone reception coil, just like so. Like that. And we need a machine frame. I think that's a one thing. Actually, don't we have one? Yeah, we do. Okay, there's a machine frame basic in here, and that's not too bad. We don't have to make it right now, fortunately. Uh, it's just uh, glass, iron, and a tin gear. That was the thing I was trying to make earlier. Um, that turned into the inscriber press that I didn't know was there. And you and bucket and a redstone reception coil makes us a fluid transposer. Now let's just put this down. Uh, I just want to make sure, yeah, it has augmentations in it. I was testing this out in a creative world uh, just to make sure that we this is doing what we expect it to because sometimes you can actually have these augmentations disabled if you're making a basic fluid transposer. Uh, in this case, it's not, so it's actually going to work well for us. Now, keep in mind, these fluid transposers, they do need power. And in addition to the hardened fluid duct, we need to get a servo. Probably need a couple servos in the end, but um, this will do for now. So, um, hmm. I need a way to get stuff out of here and into here, so we can't power it off of that one. Um, why don't we just make a new uh, stone generator? All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to take the transposer. I'm going to just drop it right here. That should start if I take as input from the bottom. 
Nope, that's wrong. Hmm. Mm hmm. I need to do. Don't lose it. Come back here. And as output from this one, uh, put a servo in here. And just activate it. So that should start pushing the lava out. And just bring it up here. And yep, that's filling up with lava. It now needs power. We're going to put that... Hmm, maybe I wanted to move this one over. Or one up. Let's move it one up. One up. And that'll allow it to get lava. And then we could put power on, let's say... Whoops. A fall. The back. And of course, power is going to be lava. Let's see if we can get this thing self-powered first. Alright. Uh, if we put an empty bucket in here. Oh, tell me you're getting... Oh. Oh, you bastard thing. So. Great idea. Except an execution. Stone generators. Do not transmit power to at least the fluid transposer. Damn it. <laughs> well, I did not expect that. Hmm. Okay. Well, we can make up this lava generator. Obviously, it takes power from lava. So we could actually do that. Get these guys to power a lava generator. It says... Let's see. It says it is uh, not as efficient as other forms of lava power generation, but we'll live with it for now. Because we want to get this area here all set up nicely. All right, there we go. Lava generator. Power multiplier times one. That's fine by me. Because we just have a single one of these. So this should... Yes, that was a verbal air quotes thing. Should power this given uh, some lava. So let's try doing that. It's getting lava. And it's getting RF. That RF is going... It's not getting RF. It's not getting enough lava. That's possible because we just have this thing working here. Let's give it a second. See if it powers up. There we go. This transposer is starting to fill up. I didn't realize that lava bucket was still going. Um, so that filled up the lava bucket. We should eventually fill this thing up with lava. Uh, might have to get more lava output uh, going on here. That'll be fine. So what we want... Clear this side. Um, is... How do we want to do this? I'm going to have to go below. I need a bucket. <laughs> Alright, so we're sending this up now. Uh, what... Of course. What we want to do is actually take the bucket out of here. And put in the whitelist empty bucket. All right, and that should bring, just have to get this over, just like so. I also set these, these guys up so they're taking from both crucibles now, and whoops, there we go, much better. So now this just has to input from the left, and that should... Give it a couple seconds. Oh, ha. Huh. Put the bucket of lava in. Let it use it. And switch this on. Enabled. And that should... Oh. Good, it did it. Okay. Pull the bucket out. And put it in there and fill that up. And now we just have to set up an output condition. That uh, is on the right, and I just need a bucket, a bucket, some bricks, and a builder's wand. So we're just going to drop down here and try not to die. Can I see? Can't see where I have stuff set up. Well, that's inconvenient. And just clearing the area here so we know where we're, we're aiming for. And just giving ourselves a little platform. 
Oops, like so. Take a breath. And clearing this out. Good. And that's why you have a waterfall there, so you don't fall to your death when you accidentally fall down. It'll be much easier once we have some type of uh, wing technology or flight technology. But the Builder's Wand will also help because it can place down multiple blocks for you and you can finally get under. All right, there is our target. So that's the output of our item ducks. That's where we want those to go. And we just go like that. Inconveniently, one short. Now I could put it to underneath. I could turn these in, hmm, 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 hmm. So if I actually come back over here, and can I, no, of course not. Wanted to get the wand out, and that's not the wand, that's the wand. Extend our platform a little bit, if at all possible. And just allow us to get underneath here. That's like so. And then we can actually put this, punch this through there. We'll put facades on top of that. And that'll save us a couple of uh, blocks, I think. Or a couple of, uh, oh, crap, 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 crap. Uh, don't flow on me, please. Thank you. Oh boy. Close that off. Woo. <laughs> now you're playing with lava. All right. Do that. You, you. I don't want that connecting up there. Break that connection. Like so, and like so, then that should, we can get up, there we go, and, oh, it auto-ejected, okay, that's good. So, it auto-ejected lava bucket here, it's currently running, the lava's being used up, so that's the nice thing about the fluid transposer with this, which is it? Servo mechanism, it has an automated output. So because this has been set up, because this has been set up, uh, it auto outputs on the right, inputs the bucket from the left, and that should give us a nice clean cycle of filling up that lava bucket uh, from this fluid transposer. Now these crucibles may or may not be able to keep up with the lava demand that this thing has, but fully powered, uh, that lava's not filling up right now. Not sure why. All right. But that should keep everything here relatively well supplied. Just going to see if we can follow this bucket as it gets pulled through our system. It's always a little bit hard to tell when the generator is going to grab the bucket. It's been sitting here with an empty flame thingy for a while. We just have to wait. There we go. So the bucket's still there, and is pulled out, and we should see it appear here shortly. There we go, bucket in, bucket out. Oh, and fire. Why do we have fire? I have no idea where that bucket is right now. Is it jammed somewhere? No, it actually got filled up. It got filled up really quickly. I expected to take it a lot longer than it did. So it actually went through. Huh, what I'm going to do no, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, keep it like that. So the bucket actually got filled up really quickly. I didn't even see it get filled up. Something happened, I didn't even notice it happening, and it came through, ended up here. So our system is now self-sustaining. Uh, this little bit here is all we need uh, to keep our dusts sifting up. Uh, we'll eventually have to sort out what's going on with these, get them sorted, but for now, that will do. So we have four quests with unclaimed rewards somewhere. Mob hunter, huh, nice. Okay, four of them here. We have hunting creepers. And we have zombie attacks, we get emeralds. Um, brain testing. We get an earth shard from killing a bunch of brainy zombies. Oh, did I not? 
Is it completed? Unclaimed. Oh, I'm out of inventory space, huh? Yep. So, claim that reward. Which one? Oh, you gave me a spawn, a spawn blizz for killing creepers. Is this repeatable? No, it is not. The zombie attack is, and that'll give us emeralds. Brain will give us earth shards. Slime. Oh, generation. That's just for making the slimy sapling. And we have slime slaying. Um. Beating blizz. And slaughtering spiders. All right. Sharp spikes is an interesting one. Because you need an iron spike. Iron spikes are made from wooden spikes, which is wood, swords, in this pattern here. And is it... So let's go ahead and make that up, because we can. One, two... Blah. One. Two. Three wooden swords. Like so. And was it planks? Yeah. And wooden spikes. And we go over here, and I think we just drop them on there and pour those on. And that gives us iron. Nice. And we probably want a couple of these. Uh, eventually. Good. And I'll just get all four of these done up. Leaves us with one iron ingot in there. And that's nice. So what these do? These are pretty neat. I'm going to use it on these guys here. It will effectively allow um, the mobs to kill themselves. <laughs> Which is what I love. Mobs killing themselves. Come on here. Now if we could only push them. Right? So if you, if you can actually get them to touch that spike, they'll die. There we go. They're, they're chasing me, and they went over the spike to do it. And they're killing themselves and dropping various loot. Basic loot, at the very least. They won't spawn on this thing, so you need this uh, as an alternative. So, let's take that back. Cool. And we got some stuff out of that. Nice. So eventually we're going to have to upgrade our mob spawner. Um, these are good for just killing. Um, it actually has some special text. Um, the spikes will not destroy items that land on them. Good. And mobs killed will drop rare items, but not experience. So it's a start. Um, we'd like them to drop experience, but uh, for rare items, we'll just take that what we can get right now. So we'll keep these iron spikes around. Um... Just gonna put that in this drop chest right now with a bunch of other stuff. And put the spawn blizz back where it should be. Um oh I don't have anything here for that yet. I have this special area here for all our uh eggs. Spawned eggs. Mob eggs. Uh, I'm going to get some platforms set up off camera so we can actually have some of these uh Aggressive passive mobs. <laughs> oh, hey, these are done. Are they done? No, not yet. Almost done. Almost done. And let's just claim our rewards. Reward bag, good. Bing. And we get imp skin leggings and stuff. Featherfall, fire protection, blast protection, projectile protection, protection one. Nice. Is that actually better? Slightly worse than the gold helmet. Slightly worse than the gold chest. And a good chunk worse than the iron leggings. But at least we have boots now. With feather falling one. Nice. Alright. So I think this automation down here is going to help us out a lot. We'll be able to build um, replicas. And I'll show you that next time. I have an automation system, possibly with clean to piping. Um for not just sand sifting, but gravel and uh, dust as well. And that should take care of this entire area and get us lots more um, ores and iron and whatever dust sifted up. 
But for now, this has been Mobius Rex from World of Scar Guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, leave us a like, give us your comments and suggestions. We'll be back with you next time. Have a good day and a wonderful night killing stuff. Bye bye.